In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I humbly bear witness that there is no God but Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I humbly bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is his exalted Christ. And I humbly bear witness that the honorable Minister Lord Farrakhan is their reminder. I greet my sisters and my brothers in the universal greetings of peace as we say it in our Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. How you feel today? All praise is due to Allah. I feel good too. Ramadan Mubarak. Brothers and sisters, when we say Ramadan Mubarak, we are saying may the blessings of this Ramadan be upon you. The word Mubarak comes from the word Barakah, meaning blessings. And when we say Ramadan Kareem, we're actually reciting one of the attributes of Allah. Kareem means honorable. And that was, that was one of the names given to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Kareem, in the beginning stage of his mission. So when I say Ramadan Mubarak and you say Ramadan Kareem, we're saying may you have a blessed Ramadan and may your, your Ramadan be honorable. Ramadan, brothers and sisters, is the month that Prophet Muhammad of Arabia received the Holy Quran. Did you know that? Yeah. It is the month that a man came to him by the name of Jibril. We call that man an angel. He was an angel. Angels are men. And he revealed to Prophet Muhammad not the whole Holy Quran at that time, but a portion of the Holy Quran, which was Surah 96, the first five ayats, the first five verses. The beginning of the surah is, is called Ikra, read. Back in Prophet Muhammad's time, the people back then didn't really know, how, most of them didn't know how to read or write. They were steeped in ignorance. Prophet Muhammad himself didn't know how to re literally read or write. But Jabril told him to read. What you mean read? I can't read, Jabril. He said, read in the name of that Lord who taught man what he did not know at one time. I'm paraphrasing. So during the course of 23 years, Jibreel would come to Prophet Muhammad and orally teach him revelation that he got from Allah. There was time that Allah directly taught Prophet Muhammad. And this is how the Holy Quran came about. But in this month, Ramadan, this was the month that Prophet Muhammad received the revelation. In this month, we as Muslims practice the fourth pillar of the five pillars that we practice. It's called Saum, fasting. We fast this month. I thought you said um, the followers of the Most Holy Blood Muhammad don't fast with the Islamic world. Yes, we do. If you read How to Eat to Live, Book 2, page 58, Alam Elijah Muhammad told us to fast with the Islamic world. But we also fast during the 12th month, yeah. which is December. Yeah. So we fast twice a year. Yeah. But if you really, really look at it, brothers and sisters, if you look at how we eat to live, right. we actually fast every day of the, every day of the year. Right. Right. We eat one meal a day. The only thing, like Brother Minister Nelson said the other day, that during Ramadan, we just abstain from eating, drinking liquids, and having sex. That's the difference between fasting during the month of Ramadan and how to eat to live one meal a day. We just abstaining, but we fast every day. But let me get back to Prophet Muhammad. When the Brill told Prophet Muhammad to read, he was not only telling him to read in writing form, but he was saying to acknowledge. Because the Holy Quran means to read, it means to recite, but it also means to remember. We as a people are all, we come from all the teachings. We have a history where we taught from word of mouth. We had knowledge down from father to son, from son to father, father to son, all the way down. But we are all the teacher. Some of us in this audience may not know how to physically read or write that good. But you do know how to read. Some of you may be mechanics and don't know nothing about the, the fundamentals of explaining about how to, how to fix a car, but you know how to fix it. Yeah. Some of us don't know the fundamentals about how to explain how to fix a TV, but we know how to fix a TV. Reading don't necessarily mean reading the book. It means to understand, to be able to interpret. So when Prophet Muhammad came to the people, he was assigned to let people know, though you may not physically know how to read, you do know how to read. And when Prophet Muhammad came among the people, they sought his life. Anytime God raised a messenger, a prophet, or a reformer to a people, you have enemies that work diligently to kill that leader, to kill that messenger. Is that right? Just like it was back then, it is today. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that he 
Prophet Muhammad was a sign of him. So when our Nabi Elijah Muhammad came to us, he didn't tell us to read, but he told us to know thyself. Yes. So he was telling us to read. Read ourselves. Because there's something inside of us that connects us to God himself. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said we are direct descendants from Allah himself. So he taught us to know thyself. To know thyself is to know God, and to know God is to know thyself. And when you know thyself, you know how to, how to, how to walk this path, walk this street. I mean, walk this path in righteousness, because God is in your nature. If you listen to him, he will talk to you. That's how you know thyself. So just like the enemy sought to kill the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and they wasn't that successful, they sought to kill our leader, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. The plot to kill Farrakhan. But it's not only a plot to kill his physical being, but it's a plot to kill his vision. All praise is due to Allah. The Bible says where there is no vision, a people perish. If you was listening to the last Savior's Day the address given by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he said it's not the, the knowledge of this world that makes us great. It is our vision. And when you have a vision, the enemy want to kill not only that man, but he want to kill that vision. Because if you can kill the vision, you can kill the people, people's direction. But today he's not going to be successful. Because we're living in a time where Allah said he himself would judge this world. And he will use a man. He won't use no spirit, but he'll use a man, the sword that's coming out of his mouth that will bring down this world. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan represent the sword, the sword that's bringing down this world. Listen, listen carefully. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, brothers and sisters, like, the Honorable, like Brother no Minister Nelson said, is backed by Allah and his messenger. And the messenger told the Honorable Minister Farrakhan that I will back you in everything you do right, but not nothing you do wrong. So he was telling us, man, as long as the minister is doing right, he will back him. And brothers and sisters, Minister Farrakhan, along with those who follow him, as well as those who support him, are with him 100%. And Allah and his messengers backing us. But you and I have to be sincere to ourselves today to recognize when God blesses us with a man. Some of us don't know when that man is, is, is among us because we're not reading but those of us who are reading, we know that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is divinely guided by God. Believe that, brothers and sisters. We know that. But do you know it? Allah says in the, in the Holy Quran, he, say, he talks about the reminder. When he sends a reminder to a people, it's really to inform them of what they should do. In chapter 7, verse 69, Allah said, Do you wonder that a reminder has come to you? From your Lord. I'm going to stop right there. Do you wonder that a reminder have come to you from your Lord? Meaning the Lord is saying that somebody is coming to us directly from him. What you mean? He visited the Lord? No, he will have the mind of God. That's what we're talking about. Remind in Arabic is dikara, meaning to remember. So when this man comes, he will have the mind of God. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan had the mind of God. Do you wonder that a reminder have come to you through a, from your Lord through a man that he may guide you? Is Minister Farrakhan guiding us? He's not only guiding the black man and woman in America, but he's guiding the whole world. All praise is due to Allah. I'm not going to be too long because Brother Minister Nelson, he's not, he knew, I think believe Minister Carmen will be coming in. We're not sure. But I'd like to say this, brothers and sisters. Today, we have to take a more serious stance in regards to what way we go pursue our life today. We can no longer jive today, brothers and sisters. If you know the truth is before you, accept it. You may not have the opportunity tomorrow to accept it. But if you accept it today, your life will change today. The Andy Lodge Muhammad teaches us that if you want to change a people's way of doing things, change their thinking. Yeah. So when this man comes, he comes with information to change our thinking. Brothers and sisters, we have to accept that change today. Because Allah says in the Holy Quran that he do not change a people until they change what's in their souls. So we have to make a commitment today within ourselves, whether we're going to stand up for truth 
or Brother Rico refused to stand up for truth. Allah said only those who stand up for truth, he will heal with them. He tells us in chapter 23 verse 1 that eventually the believer is going to be successful. He didn't say Muslims, he didn't say Christians, he didn't say Jew. He said eventually, he said the believers will be successful. So if you just believe, brothers and sisters, you will be successful in this life. And in the hereafter, not no hereafter in the sky, but after the destruction of this civilization, this wicked civilization, where we be successful. I'd like to close by saying thank you very much for hearing these few words that I had to say. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> I'd like to bring our brother Minister Nelson. Let's hear it for our beloved brother, Minister Robert Nine X, with a round of applause. All praises be to Allah. Brothers and sisters, let me just point this out. For the uh, 15 years that I've been here in the mosque, every Savior's Day that rolls around from the first Savior's Day that we've had in 1981 since our leader stood up, they always try to come up with controversy right. to, uh, and it doesn't work. I mean, you would think that an intelligent man would try something, but if he sees that Year after year after year, he come with the same old foolishness, and that foolishness isn't working, then he would come from another angle. Is that right? Every year before Savior's Day, they always come up with the Malcolm X theme. I mean, you would think that they would get tired of always pushing Malcolm out to the public because they see that it's not working. Black folks aren't asleep today. People know that the government plotted and took Malcolm's life. They know that today. They know that those men that they had up there in the prison that did 20 years weren't Malcolm's murderers. But they do this so that they can try and stop you from hearing our leader, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, because they know that he has a word in his mouth that once you hear that word and it penetrates your brain cells, that word will wake you up and put you on top of civilization overnight. All praises is due to Allah. So they try to keep you from him. They try to make you think that he is some type of a evil man, some type of a man that's against black people. Try to paint him like a Jim Jones. He's the only black leader that you and I have today that's not bowing and bending and shuffling and scratching where he doesn't itch. Is that right? You look at all of the so-called black leaders that we have today. All of them have bent and bowed and shuffled to the tune of white folk, except for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So every year they say, what could we do to stop this man? His people today are listening to him. The churches is opening up their doors so that this man can come in and the preacher takes a seat. You cannot stop this. Truth crushed to the earth must rise again. These in the Quran speaks of as the days of Allah and I must humbly say it to you that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is Allah's man. He's a laws man today on the scene. And that's why you cannot stop him. There's not a man on the face of this earth that can come against him and refute 
what he's saying to you and I. Not one living man. So each year, the white man has to dig up now a dead man, Malcolm, and then give you a dead man, knowing that if you follow a dead man, it's going to lead you to where the dead man's at, and that's to the grave. You need to back and follow a living man today. All praises is due to Allah. All praises is due to Allah. Many of you don't know this, but when Malcolm excommunicated his own self from the nation of Islam because the most honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't put him out the mosque, he silenced him for a moment. But this is my point. He wanted to come back. He sent the tape cassette to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad asking forgiveness. But before the messenger could accept him back, they plotted and they took his life. So every year now, they come up with this stuff about Malcolm to turn you around because they know that you love Malcolm because he was out in the forefront. But they want to stop you and blind you from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan will be the winner. He will be the winner. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad told him, he says, brother, you stay faithful. And you don't change the teachings while I'm gone. He says, you're going to reach the pinnacle of success in this world's life. And you see him right before your eyes today, growing and growing and growing. Is that right? At a rapid pace. But you are only seeing the surface. You just continue to stick around and continue to breathe. And you're going to see this man grow and do things that you would would baffle you. That's God working in his man. God means force and power. Not a spook God. Not a mystery God. God's only a mystery to you when you don't know him. But once you know God and you know that God is in you, as the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, every time I look at the black man and woman, I'm looking at God. And that's the truth. But the God in you is buried up under the rubbish of white supremacy and white civilization. But the word that the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan has in his mouth from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, once it penetrates, a seed is planted and when that seed is planted and it's nurtured and it begins to grow it brings the God in you out and this is what the white man doesn't want particularly the brothers have you noticed brothers that it's hard for you to get a job but you look at your black woman and she can get a job? Have you noticed that? Have you ever asked yourself, why is it that type of a climate that your sister can get a job, but here today you can't get a job? Some of us went through the white man's finest institutions, have a suitcase full of degrees, bachelor's degree, PhD, BS degree. That gets a degree too. <laughs> they called it right. And you have a suitcase full of degrees, but yet you cannot get a job for yourself. But you go back and reread the writings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he said that you need to come together and pool your resources and make a job for yourself because the white man is going to drop you from your jobs, and he's doing that today. All praises is due to Allah. 
so when they see a man like Louis Farrakhan mm -hmm. going out and rallying up the people and the people are backing him and he's showing the people how to go out and buy farmland, how to create jobs and business for yourself. White folk become afraid now because they know that once you get back to where you belong, they can no longer use you as a fool and a tool. Is that right? All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. They tried to stop our savior over 60 years ago when he came into America. They knew he was coming. The wise amongst them knew that he was coming, but they tried to stop his coming. But he got into the country. And when he got into the country, he came looking for one man. And that one man who he came looking for is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. You read about it in the scripture in the book of Malachi, which means my messenger. When God was saying, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Is that right? It's right there in your Bible that God would send you Elijah. Elijah means God is present. When they had the Jesus on the cross, he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And one of the centurions on the side said to the other, he says, uh-oh, he calls for who? He calls for Elijah. Let us see if Elijah would take him down. This is a movement that you cannot stop. You may come in with your little pop gun and you may kill us all, but the seed have been planted and that seed is planted in the minds of the people. So if you get rid of one of us, there's going to always be another one of us rising up. Right today, you have your babies in here. And little do you know that this wisdom, once it gets to flowing, it penetrates and the thinking of your babies. And your babies have come up looking for this. You can't stop this. So why don't you just stop being foolish and come and back this and let's get progress going. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah. It's written of in your Bible and Quran, Prophet Muhammad may the peace and blessings of Allah forever be upon him. He spoke about it in his hadith. He said that the Arab world will not pass away until one of my house, meaning my family, he come from the tribe of Quraysh, would come and rule the Arabs and his name would be Ahmed. Ahmed, the great Mahdi. Ahmed, the one who would come and lead and guide the people on the right path. You all have been looking around for this one to come and is still looking for him to come. But I'm here to tell you that this great one made his appearance in the West in 1930 and made himself known to the general pop, uh, public, pardon me, July 4th, 1930. Started out in Detroit, Michigan in a little ghetto area called Paradise Valley, going and knocking on doors. This is during the Great Depression time. Knocking on doors and sisters opening up the doors and he says that I'm your brother from the East. I come selling fine yard goods and silk, the same type of silk that your uh, 
people back home who are kings and queens and rulers wear. Well, back in those days, the black man and woman was in a wretched condition. Back in the 30s, because we were calling ourselves colored people, Negroes. We were believing that we were brought from Africa, swinging through trees, is that right? With bones in our noses and plates in our mouths. So we didn't want to hear anything about no Africa. You say, I ain't no African. When you thought Africa, you thought some little pygmy type fella cooking good old white folk in a pot. Is that right? So we always looked at Africa as the dark continent. It is the dark continent, dark in the sense that it's the black man's continent. It's the root of civilization. Is that right? Master Farad Muhammad said, these are the same type silks that your people back home wore. Well, the sisters let the master into the home and he began to teach them. He began to teach them that the very food that you're eating here is bad for your health. You shouldn't eat these collard greens. Is that what he said? He says, and definitely you shouldn't eat this hog. Some of you are still running around here probably eating hog. We would pray that you're not eating hog. When you're eating hog, did you know that you're eating cat, rat, and dog? Three combined makes the hog? He said, oh, come on, brother. You're trying to lay one over on me now. That sounds like fairy tale to me. You mean to tell me cat, rat, and dog? Well, where do you think a mule comes from? A mule is a crossbreed of the jackass and the horse. Is that right? Where do you think a grapefruit come from? It's the crossbreed of the lemon and orange. So the hog that you're eating is a crossbreed of cat, rat, and dog. And why was it made from cat, rat, and dog? Because that mysterious man, Master Farad Muhammad, when he came here to America, he began to preach a doctrine that was never heard before, a doctrine that was upsetting the religious world because the religious world was dead and asleep. And he came with an understanding that was shaking them up. And he said that 4,000 years ago, these very same people that you see out on Wall Street speaking the king's English, walking around in business suits, carrying briefcase, these same people were at one time, as the Quran teaches, with nothing to speak of. Said that they were running around like little savages up in the hills and cave sides of Europe. Walking around on all fours eating juniper root. Killing little wild beasts and eating them raw. And you know white folks eat meat raw, is that right? You go to the steakhouse and you see them. He orders a steak and what does he say? How does he want it? I want it rare, plenty of blood in this meat, so that when I bite into this meat, the blood can run down the side of my mouth like the savage that I am. And then here we come with our stupid selves behind him, with our top hat and cane and business suit on and say, yes, sir, give me a steak. I would like mine rare, too. You need to cut it out, trying to follow and pattern behind white folk. He's eating his rare because he doesn't know how to cook. Just came to himself 4,000 years ago. Back in those days, he was afraid of fire, and he's still afraid of fire today. Is that right? All praises be to Allah. That's what Moses had to do when he went into the hills and cave sides of Europe to civilize white folk, teach him how to build a home for himself, teach him how to cook his food and how to season it with different seasonings. He said some of them were so vicious that he had to actually build a ring of fire around him at night to keep the devil from harming him. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that 
Moses or Musa was a half original man, said that he was a man that looked like an albino. Very, very light in complexion, looking almost like the Caucasian himself, but he had those old black features, you know, that big, thick lip and broad nose and woolly hair. So the white man, the shrewd ones that were up there in the cave said, there's something about this fella that's a little different from you and I. He ain't really one of us. So they gave him a lot of problem. And he had to literally build a ring of fire around him at night just to keep the white man from harming him. He said at one point they gave him so much trouble that he rounded up around 300 of them in number and took them up on a mountain and said, stand here, you will hear the voice of God, said that he had planted sticks of dynamite all around the mountainside. He said, stand here and hear the voice of God and meet your maker. And said he set it off and blew them up. <laughs> the imams, all praises due to Allah. said the imams got a little upset with uh, Musa. He says, if you only knew how much trouble these devils are giving me, you do as I do. Well, we know that the white man is definitely a troublemaker. Is that right? Every place he's been on our planet, he's created bloodshed and trouble. And you're still waiting around here in 1995, waiting for this man to change. This man is not going to change today because his root nature and the way he was made, he was made to do what he's doing. Now, I will say this so that you don't say that we are racist here in the mosque because we are not. I wouldn't have a problem with Jesus if Jesus was a white man. I tell you straight up. I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. But you see, it was white folk that made color a big thing. See, it wasn't us that took Jesus and painted him white. That was white folk. So why did the white man do that? Because through his skillful, scientific, devious mind, he had to change the people of color into looking like himself. Why? So that he can rule you. So now he takes a man, a black man, Jesus, because in the book, the Bible, in Daniels and in uh, Revelations, it describes what he looks like. It says he has hair like lamb's wool, is that right? And feet like bronze that, or brass that has been burnt in an oven. You know that Brass is a bronze color, but if you take that bronze and burn it in an oven, then that's telling you that's a black man. Is that right? But it was white folk that took Jesus and painted him white. Why? Because he wants to rule you through white supremacy. So now when you go into the church and you look up on the wall and you see this uh, blonde head, blue eyed white man hanging on a cross, sometime he has brunette hair. I didn't think they had uh, Clairol back in those days. But sometimes he's blonde, sometimes he's blue. But the fact remains that they always have him painted white. Is that right? So that in your subconscious mind, because you're taught that this Jesus is the Son of God. And in some churches they teach that this Jesus is in fact God himself. So now in your subconscious mind, when you look at a white man, you think that you're looking at God. So now you come up with a low self-esteem and an inferiority complex about yourself. But you see, the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad breaks up all that warped thinking. You know, we have a lot of different groups of Muslims, even Christians and black folk in general, say that the nation of Islam, they're not teaching true Islam. Elijah Muhammad didn't teach the um, true practice of Islam. 
He taught uh, racism. He talked about the black man. Well, look at our condition. Back in those days, running around calling ourselves colored boys and Negroes and little colored girls. Is that right? So the first thing that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad had to do, he had to teach you who you were. Because you were running around here like fools. And I mean, I can imagine, here's the scholars and scientists of this world say, look how I got my niggas controlled. They are running around here calling themselves colored people. This might shock some of you. But in all truth, and this is not being a racist, the white man is the colored man. Did you know that? Yes, he's the colored man. Colored, as we always mention, is the past participle of the verb to color. Color, colored means to alter a thing, to change a thing. Colored takes the color out of a thing. So when the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the white man was the colored man, he knew exactly what he was talking about. And he also went a little further. He says, not only is he the colored man, he says, but he is also Yaqub's grafted devil, the skunk of the planet Earth. Isn't that what he said? Now I know, I know that sounds very harsh to some of your sophisticated ears. He, in there, I, 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 I told you those Muslims was nothing but a bunch of racists. They're in there talking about good old white folk like that, calling them a colored man. I've been taught that I was colored all my life. I'm a Negro. You don't know what the hell y'all. One year you say I'm a Negro. Next year you call yourselves a nigger. Then the next year after that you say, well, no, I'm not a nigger or a Negro. I'm a black man. Now we woke up, but then the following year we say, oh, nope, I'm an Afro-American this year. I'm an African. We don't know what the hell we are. We want to be some of everything except for who we really are. What's wrong with being the black man? What's wrong with being the black woman? All light comes out of dark. Is that right? So when we say that you are the black man, we are saying that you are the first man and woman under the light of the sun. There's nothing wrong with that. All oh, praises be to Allah. All oh, praises due to Allah. Then you say, well, I can agree with that. Because that does make sense. Because I know through colors that if you just took white paint, you sure can't get yellow. God knows you can't get brown. And you're definitely not going to get black. But from black, you can get all colors. But now you see, black is not a color, but it's the essence from which all color comes from says, now I can agree with that, but I don't agree with you all when you say that we're the Asiatic black man. See, because when you think of Asiatic black man, you think of Asia, and when you think of Asia, you think of some little slanty-eyed looking fellow, the Chinaman and the Japanese, is that right? But the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, when he taught us that the uh, original man was the Asiatic black man and is the Asiatic black man, he wasn't dealing with surface knowledge, he was going to root. What do you mean he was going to root? He says because at one time this whole entire planet was called Asia and due to the fact that the earth is our home, we are called after our home, Asiatic black man, Asiatic black woman. Get some of those old maps. And you look at those old maps in it for Europe, it says uh, Eurasia. We mentioned one time before that the white man teaches you about Asia uh, Minor. What about Asia Major? Asia Major is 196,940,000 square miles of this whole entire planet Earth. Is that right? 
all praises is due to Allah. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad was not only taught by a master, but he was taught by God in person. You have some people today running around here saying that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is changing the teachings. You need to stop. You don't even know the teachings. Just shut up and be quiet. He's the only man that's doing for you and I that which we cannot do for ourselves. No other black leaders is taking us into the hereafter, into the promised land. None of them. The others are taking you straight to hell at breakneck speed because any time someone wants to continuously try to integrate you with white folk, and I'm sorry, but I got to say it, they are taking you straight to hell because the white man is in fact the devil. We don't change that teaching. You come in here and say, well, you all are changing the teaching because I don't hear about the white man being the devil. See, you like to hear us always uh, condemn white folk, but you see, you get past the real deal. And the real deal now today in 1995, beloved, you got to look into the mirror at yourself. See, we're our biggest and our greatest enemy. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad did not teach us that the white man was the devil so that we can make mockery of him. He taught us that the white man was the devil so that we can study him. He says, because if it wasn't for you and I, the black man, there wouldn't be no white man. Huh? Oh, yeah. Let's go to the root. See, we always want to blame everything on white folks, and believe me, you, they have a lot of blame to bear. But we want to go to root, because what is it in the black man and what is it in the black woman that not created but made the white man? We don't say that the white man is a created man. We say that he's a made man. The Bible speaks of him as a made man. When you read there in your our Bible, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad called it a poison book. He said, oh my God, now where's he going? A poison book. Jesus Christ. This blasphemy against God. Poison, beloved. Medicine is poison. Did you know that? And when you have what the white scientists call disease, but we call it dis-ease, because the body is not at ease, but is diseased, and you have ailment and sickness in you, that's an accumulation of poison built up in you. So as it takes steel to sharpen steel and you fight fire with fire, it takes poison to combat poison. So we've been buried in the King James Version of the Bible, is that right? So the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad called it a poison book to use it to break up the poison in your poisonous minds. He said that there's truth in the Bible if properly understood. And most of us, when we read that old scripture, there in Genesis, about Adam and Eve, we start getting all spiritual and thinking now that we're talking about the first man and woman that ever lived on the face of this earth. Is that right? But that's not so. It's not so. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad says that the true history of the white man is shrouded in the story of Adam. He says that he's the Adam of the Genesis. See, some of you didn't know this, but you need to go back and study your Bible or your, as he called it, your poison book. There was two makings of Adam in the book. One was made on the sixth day and one was made on the seventh day. 
but you never question your teacher. And what we are saying is that the one that was made on the sixth day was the making of the white man. Now, I know some of you don't believe that, but all of the scholars and scientists say that they agree that Adam was made 4004 B.C. Well, if Adam was made 4004 B.C. and we are 2000 A.D., that means that we are just a little over 6,000 years from the making of Adam. So if Adam and Eve is the first two parents on the earth, and we have record from scholarship that history of the black man goes back not thousands of years ago, not millions of years ago, not even billions of years ago, but goes back trillions of years ago, then who is this Adam and who is this Eve? Would you like to talk about that today? Let's talk about that today and see if we can go to the root of this Adam and this Eve. Just think about it. Here God one day with his majesty. It says in, be in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Quran says that he said, kun fire kun, being it is, don't, doesn't need any help. He's there all by himself. He says, let this be, let that be. And I mean, creation is just popping up. Now, all of a sudden, after all of this magnificence in creation, now all of a sudden God wants to make a man, but he needs help. Well, what happened? God, you uh, lost your power? No, God didn't lose his power. You just don't have proper understanding of what the books is talking about. All of a sudden now, God needs help. He says, come, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and over every creeping thing that creepeth and crawl upon the earth and then give them power and dominion. Then it says, and replenish, which means to repopulate. To repopulate means that you got to put someone there and remove another people that were originally there. Is that right? So in the Quran, it states it like this. God talking, he says, I'm going to place a ruler in the earth. And the angel said, what would you place in it, God? One who would make mischief and cause the shedding of blood? And Allah said, surely I know what you know not. Then it goes and says that they made this man, and look at on I'm speaking now, from the essence of black mud. But now in the Bible, it speaks a little different. Because it didn't make the Adam from the essence of black mud, so now you're confused. Because, see, you think that the Adam in the Bible and the Adam in the Quran is one and the same. Well, I'm here to beg your pardon, but they're not one and the same. The Adam that was made from the essence of black mud is the original black man and woman, and the Adam that was made on the sixth day is the white man. And we're going to prove it to you. Ask yourself this question, now that we're talking on this subject matter. Here's two people on the earth, Adam and Eve. Is that right? Yes, they had two sons, correct? Yes, what were their names? Yes, Cain and Abel. Yes, now, yes, Cain got jealous of his brother Abel. Is that right? Yes, what did Cain do to his brother? Yes, he killed his brother. Yes, now, when God comes and questions Cain, what did Cain tell God? I'm not my brother's keeper. But what did God do to Cain? God exiled Cain from the garden, right, as a vagabond, and where did he send him? To the land of Nod. Now, when he got to the land of Nod now, because remember, there's Adam and Eve, two people, the first two parents of all. Then they have two sons, Cain and Abel. Now there's four. But now Cain, out of envy and jealousy of his brother, he kills his brother, so that should be three. But now, when Cain is exiled, he goes to the land of Nod, 
but it says, the scripture says, and in the land of Nod, he found himself a wife. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Something's wrong someplace. All praises is due to Allah. This is why the white man don't want you to hear this kind of wisdom. Because this wisdom breaks up that old spook mentality and knocks out his brains. Is that right? All of the scholars and scientists, beloved, say that the land of Nod is in what they call Mother Africa today. So if he found himself a wife in Mother Africa, and we already established the fact that the original black man's history goes way beyond 6,000 years, is that right? So these people are called what? Pre-Adamites. People before Adam. Some call them aborigines. You know, you don't like to be called an aborigine. Sisters say, I'm not no aborigine, brother. How could you call me an aborigine? An aborigine is something primitive, something savage. No. Aborigine is two Latin words. Ab meaning from and origine meaning the beginning. People from the beginning. From the beginning of what? From the beginning of time. The original man, the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. All praises is due to Allah. All praises is due to Allah. God makes this man Adam. He was talking to his companions and said, come, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. We give them power. But now God runs into another problem because now we have to make a woman for this man. But now we, we can't use us an hour to make this woman. So we're going to have to take Adam now and cut him open and go in and snatch out a rib. And from the rib, we're going to make the woman. And that's what they teach you in the church. They've taught us that here in America all our lives. Is that right? Have you ever looked at a rib? A rib is a crooked bone. Is that right? You cannot really straighten the rib out. You take a mallet, you break a rib. What is that telling you? That's the history of the making of the white man hidden in that biblical story of Adam and Eve. See, you also thought that Adam was probably one man. You thought that. But when you read in your Genesis of your Bible, it says male and female created he them and called their name Adam. Not his name Adam, but their name Adam, male and female. So Adam now we find out is just not the male, but he's the male and the female. But now they had to go into Adam and take out a rib to make the woman. What is this all talking about? Just like Adam is more than one, uh, is male and female, woman is also male and female. Look at the word woman and break it down. You have woe man. Woe means damnable and destruction. Woe symbolizes a people that's made from the original, that has a crooked, damnable nature. So God had to go into Adam and take out the rib of Adam to make Woman, this is the grafting process that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been trying all these years to teach you about. They call it today genetic engineering. We call it grafting, but the white man calls it genetic engineering. It's one and the same thing. Is that right? All praises due to Allah. Let's bust it up. Now, mind you, the woman's name is not Eve yet. She's still called a woman, is that right? After God 
makes his creation. He gives them instruction. He says, you can eat from all of the trees in the garden, but do not tamper with the tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Is that right? As soon as God left the garden, a serpent came up. And when the serpent came up, he didn't come up crawling. He came up walking according to the scriptures. And he tricked the man and woman to tamper with the tree of life. Is that right? When God came back to the Garden of Eden, he seen that his creation was not there. He says, where's my creation? Why are you hiding? And they said, because we are naked. Well, who told you you were naked? The serpent said, ah, you tampered with that that I instructed you not to tamper with. So the scripture says that he cast the man out of the garden of Eden and placed at the east gate of the garden cherubims with a flaming sword to keep Adam from entering back into the garden of Eden. Isn't that the uh, story? And then from that point, he called the woman's name Eve. Eve is rooted in evil. Adam is rooted in the word adamant. Adamant means an upright person. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the white man was made from the black man. Says that he was made from or by a black scientist by the name of Yaqub. You all heard of that history before. And he says that 59,999 followers, Yaqub making 60,000, went off to an island in the Aegean Sea called the island of Patmos in the book of Revelations. But the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said it was the island of Pilon. He says that these people that he took with him were Muslims. That is your Adam right there in your book. But he says that after they got on the island, they begin a grafting process. And how did this grafting process take place? They were given instruction by Yaqub. He instructed them. The first thing he had to do was set up a laboring staff. Doctors, ministers, nurses, and one cremator, we call him a hatchet man. And they were given instruction. What was the instruction? told the doctors, he says, look, when two black people come to you to marry, he says, take their blood. Go into the back of your laboratory and, pret and pretend as if you are examining the blood to see if it matches and then come back and tell them your blood doesn't match. You can't get married. Uh -huh. Then give them a certificate to take to the uh, minister, not allowing him to marry. But the nurse, she had a hard job because she had to kill the black baby. He said, now, he knew that out of all those black folk, think about that, 59,999 black folk going off to an island, Pilon. He knew that out of all these black people, that some of them was going to sneak around. You mean to tell me that they wasn't going to be sneaking around on that island? So he told the nurse, he says, look, when a sister is born, I mean, is pregnant, as soon as that baby comes out of the womb, if it's a black baby, says take a pen and stick it in the brain of that baby and tell the mother that the baby was born, still born, and that the baby was carried away into heaven. And when she, the mother, dies, one day the baby would secure a home for her in heaven. And this baby is called an angel baby. But if the baby comes out as a brown baby, then make much ado over the baby. See, this is your Adam and your Eve in the Bible. Being grafted, a grafting process. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad says that when the nurse tricked the mother to get the baby and killed the baby, then they would take the baby and feed it to a wild beast. If they couldn't find a wild beast to feed the baby to, then they took it to that hatchet man called the cremator, and the cremator burned them. See, I have to reacquaint you yes, with the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad because this is what he taught us. 
and we don't change that teaching today. And that's what your books are talking about. He says that that first one that was made after 200 years of separating the black germ or separating the brown germ from the black and grafting it, he says at the end of 200 years you had an island full of nothing but white folk. I mean, not white folk, but brown people. And he says that that, that, that brown man was the Japanese. The scholars and scientists try to refute the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and say, how could you say that the brown man is the Japanese man while they had history going back up into ancient Japan, going back hundreds of thousands of years. This grafting process, Elijah, only took place 6,000 years. He says because at that end of that 200 years, some of them were allowed to leave the island. And those that left the island went up into what they call Japan today. And when they went up into J J Japan, they found the black man. And they took the black man and pushed him out of his seat of power, and they began to rule. But the original man of that area is black. Yes, we know that Japan has an ancient history, but it's not the brown Japanese history. It's the black man's history, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. He said this process continued to go on. He says within the next 200 years, they begin to work on the brown and got the yellow. You see how the process goes? It's always getting lighter and lighter. And he said that at the end of 600 years, you had a race of blonde-haired, blue-eyed devils. See, you all would like to say that that's racist. But that's not racist, that is the absolute truth. And this is the truth that white people do not want you to hear. This is the truth that white people do not want you to know.